We all know that solar panels are happiest when they face south. But are they still worth installing if you can't do that? If your house only gives you options of east or west? And what if you have more overcast than sunny days? Are they still worth installing then? I mean, everybody will have opinions. You know what they say about opinions. But I've tested that and I can actually show you the numbers. I never intended for this place to be off-grid solar powered. I had a guy clear an area with a bulldozer and then I'd come out first thing in the morning and then last thing in the daylight evening and saw where the sun rose, saw where it set. I split the difference and that's the direction the porch faced. And I figured I'd just run power from the power company. There is a pole, what I thought not that far away, but <laughs> they gave me the quote and it was like $12,000. And I was like, eh, maybe we'll find something else. So that splitting of the difference in the morning and in the afternoon ended up with me facing, well, almost perfectly south. It was 16 degrees off south. And that's what really prompted me to go solar on this thing. It was set up perfectly for it. The only thing is, when we were building it, it was an incredibly hot summer and I had to do something and that's when I installed the solar powered ACs, which meant temporarily putting panels on the west side of the building. And if you haven't seen that video, it's certainly worth a look. I go through how you could essentially get free heating and cooling for your place. I'll link the video in the corner and in the description below. Another good thing that came out of that video is the place that I got those solar AC units from, Signature Solar, also happens to have some of the best prices on solar panels and inverters that I've been able to find. And they gave me a discount code that I'll also put in the description below. I'll do an update video on how those solar AC units have been performing very soon. But let's get back to talking about panel directions, specifically my west-facing panels. Those panels are still up and they'll likely remain up because I bought a pallet of 36 of these things and there's 12 up there. And then for the south facing porch, there's going to be 24 in total. Right now I have 12 because I have one array up. That's the junk in the garage that I have to attend to. So how important is it for the panels to face in the right direction? I mean, if you're gonna do like math involved with your decision to go solar, then you definitely need to know, is it worth it? How much am I losing? What kind of percentage? So I waited for a perfectly sunny day to do this test and that happened a few days ago. So let's take a look in the morning what the data looks like. So I should specify which set of panels is which. PV1 are the west facing panels, PV2 are the ones that face south. So in the morning, this was 9.55, it was just before 10 a.m., the west facing panels are still in shade, so you can see it, there's like a huge, huge difference there. If we're gonna do a percentage wise, it's gonna be not worth doing really, but you know. 196 divided by 2588, 7.5%. So you definitely don't want to put them in shade, but nobody would really do that. But if you have no choice but to put them on the east and west side of your roof, well, while the side that's facing west is in shadow, now you know what it's going to put out, 7.5%. Okay, so what about when both panels were in full sun, the west facing panels and the south facing panels. How did those stack up? Let's take a look. So here we do have a difference. The south facing panels are making more power. How much more? All right, so let's uh, bust out with the simple math here. 3118 divided by 3817 gives us, let's call it 82%. It's actually better than I would have guessed. I would have thought they would have been down by like 30%, but here they're only down like 18%. So that's actually not as bad as I would have thought. But what about later in the day? So here we are at 437 in the afternoon and things kind of actually look closer. Let me see if that is in fact the case. 1520 divided by 1689. Yeah, it is. Now it's basically 90%. So you're only losing 10% at this point in time. That's really surprising to me. I mean, the sun is setting and it does set in the west, so it is potentially gonna favor those panels. There's one other thing I forgot to mention while I'm thinking about it. I actually did measure the angle of the roof just because you might wanna know and I did the same protractor thing on that photograph and it's not much, it's six degrees. And there are places online where you can go and figure out like what the optimum panel angle is, you know, for your geographic region. 
But when you're figuring that out, think about when you're going to need the most power and shoot for that. Like here in Southern Texas, it's kind of a no-brainer. You need the most power in the summer to run the AC because of the sun and the heat and the Texas and the cactus. And anyway, in the summertime, the optimal angle is like 10 degrees for around here. And my roof is already at six degrees, eh, close enough. But anyway, now that we've done the 430 thing, let's see what it looked like just before sunset. So here we are, it's 5.30ish, it's right before the sun sets, and the difference is even less now. So it's, you know, 638 watts coming from the west facing panels and 708 coming from the south. So that gives us a percentage of 638 divided by 708, just over 90%. Pretty much the same as the one at half past four from earlier. So it's. It's not as big of a difference as I would have thought. I would have, again, I would have thought it would have been like 30%, but you know, we're bouncing between like 18 and 10 effectively. So it's not taking a huge hit. Of course, if the panels are in shade, then, then you kind of are. But what if you have an overcast day? What kind of difference do you have from east to west at that point in time? Well, this is where it's kind of interesting to me because this is in the morning when the west side panels would normally be in shadow. It's 9.50 in the morning here. But you can see that the west side panels are actually making more power than the south facing panels. Yeah, this is kind of weird. 430 divided by 360 gives us just, we're, we're using that particular order of division just to keep things consistent. But basically, you're seeing 20% more power coming from the ones that should be completely in shade. Weird. So then I checked it around noonish and I kind of got the same thing, actually, if you look at the numbers. And here we're 1643 divided by 1416. Here we're 16% up. Now, one of the reasons why I think that the south facing panels in situations like that are actually producing less power is that the cabling going to those panels is like three times longer. So there's probably some losses in the cable. I mean, it's, it's not insignificant, I should, I'll save that for another video, but after after this, I'm gonna have to go and, and, and take a look because that's how my brain works. I need to know how these things work. So let's just sum it up real quick. If your panels don't face in the right direction, you're talking about maybe a 20% loss. If you have a lot of cloudy days, well, there's a huge loss there between the two. You're down to like 15%, depending on the time of day. And if you live in a place where there's more overcast days than sunny, it really doesn't make a difference at all what direction the panels face, but you do get greatly reduced output, of course. And for those of you who are wondering, where's my moment of Roger? Well, here it is. <laughs>